we treasure the present and we shape the future. We honor the past because APEC was founded exactly nine years ago. Next year, we celebrate our 10th anniversary. We are grateful to past presidents and past excos for bringing us to where we are today. We are a small but not insignificant in number with about 190 members. I got that number from, from uh, from our membership chair. However, we punch way beyond our size and weight. We have demonstrated our ability to organize coaching conferences. We have done three in 2010, 2012, and 2014. Our uh, next one will be in May in Bangkok. Do come and join us. We treasure our present because we focus on the here and now. This very moment, by focusing and living in this very moment, we help ourselves to reach a higher state of being. We in APEC highly value mindfulness, so much so that it has become a part of our 2017 conference theme, Harmony and Mindfulness for Humanity. Our world is increasingly fast changing, volatile, uncertain, complex, and unambiguous, and presents us with many challenges and issues. Embracing harmony and mindfulness as a way of life is a modest and humble way to respond to the world. We treasure our present also because we have many achievements to share uh, at this AGM. Our ex core members will shortly share their respective achievements. We have much to cheer about. As APEC founder, permit me to highlight two achievements. One, the Council of Presidents, fondly referred to as COP, comprising past presidents and current president, is APEC's Brains Trust, a unique feature and strength of APEC that distinguishes and separates APEC from other coaching organizations. COP continues to work very closely with EXCO. Two COP members, Julius and Lydia, are president and first uh, VP. And the other two COP members, Dr. Waterfront and I, are members of the nominations committee charged with identifying and recommending the new EXCO, which will take office in October 2017. The second achievement is that APEC constantly focus on effectiveness and efficiency. We have streamlined EXCO from 17 to 12 members, becoming leaner, more cohesive and collaborative, and more team-oriented and community-focused in the process. We hope the f uh, we shape the future because we are always on the lookout for new talent, which, which is APEC's lifeline, to ensure that APEC grows from strength to strength and that we continue to be the coaching voice of the Asia Pacific region. We, we look for leaders who are blessed with good and strong character, who are wise and inspiring, who have a good sense of humor and humility, who are team players and who are community oriented. The great physicist and Nobel laureate Albert Einstein once said, I never teach my pupils 
I provide the conditions in which they want to learn. Learning from Einstein, IPEC can provide an inviting environment in which people want to join APAC because of what we stand for and who we are. Namely, we add talent, we subtract poor processes, systems and practices, we multiply best practices and divide the reward and credit. APEC can offer two benefits to its members, success and happiness. Success is helping members to get what they want. Happiness is helping members to want what they got. For members to enjoy what they do and to feel that it counts when serving APEC and the community. What else can be more challenging, more fulfilling and more fun? In conclusion, I would like to end on a high and inspiring note with deep appreciation to George Bernard Shaw, an Irish playwright for his influence on me. Other coaching organizations see things as they are and ask why. APEC sees things that never were and ask why not. That is our number one challenge and in rising to the challenge, APEC's golden years will be ahead. The best is yet to be. Keep in mind what Margaret Mead, a cultural anthropologist, once said, never doubt that, in a, that a small group of thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you for your kind attention. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Thank you so much. Very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Very uplifting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Silovan, for your energizing and uplifting message. You are Thank you. the driving force behind APAC. We're so blessed. Thank you. I submit that the uh, objective of the exercise to be inspirational was achieved. Anyone second that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. Awesome. Yep. So now, let's move on to the meeting proper. First, let's confirm the minutes of the AGM last year. I'm assuming you have already read the minutes as, you, as we have sent this to you in advance. So anyone who would like to propose the minutes of last year's AGM? Helen Hettinka here. I would like to propose. Thank you. Gerald, I'll second. Okay, thank you so much, Gerald. And now, my report as APAC president. After the talk of Siluan, um, I, I say that that is a tough act to follow. <laughs> so, nevertheless, I'm very happy to share with you that the Exco's diversity, dynamic leadership, collaboration, and commitment, supported and guided by the Council of Presidents, have successfully laid the strong foundation for setting new heights for APAC. We had a great start through an Exco retreat in Bangkok last January 22 and 23 last year, uh, this year where we formed strong synergies and we crafted APAC strategies and goals for 2016 and 2017. And we hope that, you know, all these uh, strategies and goals will be putting to life our vision of becoming the coaching voice of Asia Pacific and our mission to bring the power and value of coaching to every workplace and home. I must admit that during the first year, it was really a very challenging one for us. But at the same time, it was also full of new and exciting learnings and discoveries. And here are the fruits of our labor. Uh, number one, members engagement opportunities. Um, aside from the usual activities that we have like monthly talks, peer group coaching, and other activities. We also created more opportunities for members to participate and be involved with APAC. Um, these opportunities serve as an avenue for learning and exposure. 
members, members who are invited to join the committees. Each committee is now composed or comprised of chair, <laughs> deputy chair, and committee members. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those who volunteered to join the committees. Second, we revived the newsletter with a new name, APAC Voice. And this letter, newsletter is where you can share your wonderful work, your articles, news, and insight. And Dali, our PR chair, will talk more about this in her report later. Third, we launched the President's Update last May this year. And this comes out every two months to update you with what's happening at APAC. The third one just came out last October 3. Sorry, I can hear uh, yeah, some background noise. Maybe we can good, ask yes. them. Yeah, Michael? Yes. Yeah, could I, everyone who's not speaking, please mute yourselves. I can't do it. I can't do it from my computer for some reason. Um, yeah, that sounds better. Yeah, I uh, think that's better. For future reference, Julius, I think you have to do it because you're now the host, if you can. But, yes, but now it's better. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. So, the president update somehow opened the lines of communication between members and the president. And I see more and more members reaching out to me, and that's good. Uh, fourth, we opened a new position called APAC Community Relations Country Representative. And this person will lead the APAC pro bono coaching projects in their respective countries. And this is another great opportunity for members to exercise leadership. And since the pro bono coaching project now goes local, there will also be more opportunities for APAC members to serve and to share the gift of coaching. And our community relations chair, Gerald, will talk more about this initiative. And uh, lastly, the EXCO recently approved the creation of a new position, and this is the APAC country ambassador, who will serve as the face of APAC, and whose uh, primary role is to promote APAC at the local level. And hopefully, he will uh, inspire other coaches to join and benefit from our unique community. Um, I have already written all members to submit their application for this position. And a few members have already significant, uh, signified their interest. So if you're interested, all you need to do is to send your bio to me and we will respond to you for the next steps. There are a few other engagement initiatives and our membership chair, Catherine, will talk more about them. She will also tell us about the significant increase in our membership since we assumed office. <laughs> Second, um, new APAC offerings. Uh, we have two new offerings. One is the coach consulting program, which is in line with APAC commitment to support the ongoing professional development of our members. Um, the background noise, please. Yes, so, please yourself. yes once again, whoever. Okay, everyone else who's not speaking, everyone except for Julius, please mute yourself. It's a lot of background noise. Thank you. It sounds better now. All right. Thank you so much. And so the second offering is the Pro Bono Coaching Ghost Local Project. We have been providing pro bono coaching for NGOs and other communities in the region in the last years, but this time we are expanding it and reaching out to more countries. And Gerald is going to talk more about this later. Next is an APAC promotion and visibility. As the coaching voice of Asia Pacific, our voice must be loud enough to be heard by everyone. So we have intensified our marketing efforts in promoting APAC to other coaches in the world, not just in the region and to the public in general. Um, hopefully this strategy will, will impact our growth as an organization. And we do this through number one, tie-ups and event sponsorships. Last year, we are a major sponsor of the ICF Philippines International Coaching Summit uh, last November 6, 2015. 
which had um, more than 800 delegates. And another uh, platform that you're, we are leveraging in promoting impact are the social media and other online platforms. So Dali will also be talking about this later. And hopefully also the APAC country ambassadors will boost our visibility and eventually attract new members. Uh, Siluan has spoken about the APAC coaching conference. And that's right. This is going to be the highlight of APAC's 10th anniversary. So this is going to be super special, something unique, historical, and memorable. That's why it's only seven months away from now, and yet we have already some soft launch it. And Jimmy, the um, chair of the organizing committee, will give you some more updates about this in her report. So now let's go to research. Uh, last April this year, the EXCO approved a cutting edge research that will be conducted in three countries, China, Hong Kong, and India. And we're hoping that the results will uh, be available at the second quarter of 2017. And hopefully they will also be presented during the APA conference. And the Deputy Chair of Research Committee, Cynthia, will talk more about this um, in, and, and other research initiatives in the pipeline. And lastly, um, Siluan already mentioned this, some changes in EXCO. So we have a leaner, meaner uh, team. And we have a new community relations chair, Gerald, new research chair, Eliza, and uh, Michael. He is also the new honorary secretary while concurrently handling the role of program committee chair. So overall, I would say that it was indeed a successful one year for APAC, but we have yet to achieve greater milestones. My appreciation and gratitude go to my EXCO team whose collaboration, commitment, and leadership have made all this happen. I also would like to recognize the efforts and contributions of former EXCO members who have helped us uh, plant the seeds, but they have opted to give up their EXCO roles to pursue other priorities. And I would like to mention their names in recognition of their contributions. So Shane Warren, Dina Makari, Reiner Smiths, Bev Michelle Wu and Mad by Siluan, who never cease from giving us advice and sharing their wisdom and experiences, as well as emotional support and inspiration. And lastly, I thank all the members. I thank all of you for staying with us in this journey. And I urge you to continue your engagement and partnership with us. Thank you. And that is my report. So thank now, you, you may want what our financial standing is. At the end of the day, it's all about APAC sustainability and growth. So let's hear it from William, our treasurer. William, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Now we Hi, can hear you. Can. Now you can, yeah? Hi, uh, evening everybody. Um, our, just a, a quick report, our current assets moved up to 135,000 from 121 last year. Yeah, um, the main income we have this year uh, mainly came from an increase uh, in membership. We have an increase of uh, 19,000, uh, nearly four times from the year before. Okay, this was our main source of income. Uh, what's interesting this year is there's a, another revenue stream of... Um, advertisements on our APEC boys, thanks to Dolly and her team. Uh, this is, the amount is small, but this is a, a good source. Mm -hmm. Expenditure has been kept at about $7,000. So we have a surplus of 11 over 1000 for this year. This is a non-APEC year, therefore uh, the revenue streams are uh, lesser, much lesser, but we managed to keep a healthy book. Yeah, that's where we are this year. Any questions? All right. Yep. So it looks like there are no questions. So maybe they're reserving it for the Q and A portion. Yep. 
So <laughs> let's move on to the committee reports. So let's start with the report of Gerald, the committee chair of community relations. So Gerald, please take it away. Hello, dear colleagues, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Uh, thank you, thank you, Julius. Um, just uh, uh, very briefly, uh, currently the Community Relations Committee comprises of myself and the Deputy Chair Priyanko. Um, now, uh, as I will mention a little later, Priyank is also uh, wanting to, to move on because of work commitments. Um, so we are actively seeking uh, a replacement. Um, at the moment, we have projects in various stages of negotiation in the Philippines, India, China, and Thailand. Um, you have all seen my report, and um, because this is a movable feast and things are changing constantly, um, there's not much I can add at this moment. Uh, we are exploring opportunities in other countries as we find local contacts and in fact uh, have reached out to a past pro bono NGO contact in Singapore. Uh, the coaching offer is primarily in English, but we will extend to a local language if it's essential and where resources permit. The, at the moment, um, as Julius has already said in his report, we have eight country representatives. Um, and we are very thankful to all of them for their, their uh, support. And in fact, as you know, I had sent out an email requesting uh, volunteers from APAC for pro bono coaching and for the Community Relations Committee. We are currently processing uh, indications of interest from five people who wanted to join pro bono coaching and three for the committee and i'm hoping that there would be be other people who would volunteer so that we can have a good number um, in reserve for pro bono coaching um, i would like to say a special thanks to Rainer schmidt our, our past committee chair and also to pueng um, who's still bravely carrying on until we get a re replacement, and Irie Hidaka, who was a past committee member. And also I'd like to say thank you to all the past presidents and exco members who have always been willing to help with their contacts, and the current president, Julius, of course, for his personal support in the projects. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to, to pick them up. Thank you, Gerald. Maybe they're reserving it for the Q&A. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So now let's move on to the mm -hmm. research. Uh, um... Okay, is that me? Um, did I hear? Yeah, okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me just do this. Yeah, good evening. Um, I'm, uh, this is Cynthia, Deputy um, Chair for Research. I'm very honored to be sharing with you on behalf of the research subcommittee about what we've attempted in the past year under the leadership of Beth Pollan, who was our research uh, committee chair. Um, I would like to report mainly on two key focus areas which we've been working on, namely um, raising awareness of coaching research among our APAT members and secondly, um, conducting coaching studies in Asia. As you all know, APEC's vision is to be the coaching voice of Asia Pacific. We believe that researching and coaching in Asia is one important area where we can make a difference and have a voice in the global coaching community. So the first step for us is really to create and raise awareness of coaching research. So, so far, we've been taking baby steps. We've organized a talk on the topic of uh, research, what it is and why do we care. And tonight, we have uh, scheduled um, a research-related talk entitled The Hidden History of Coaching by uh, Dr. Lanny Wildflower, who was the designer of evidence-based coaching at the Fielding Graduate University. So please stay for the talk. I trust that it will be an interesting one. 
Other areas that we've been working on to raise awareness include contrib uh, con contributing articles um, on co commenting on current research and compelling research journal links, graduate institutions in the APET region for those who like to pursue further education and coaching, as well as connecting with universities like Oxford Brooks that are offering graduate degrees in mm -hmm. coaching to encourage graduate students to pursue coaching research in Asia. In fact, one of our research subcommittee members um, was uh, just recently graduated from Oxford Brooks and we're delighted to have her announced us. So that is what we've attempted in creating awareness for our members. The second focus area um, for us that we focus on is actually do research. Thanks to Raina Schmidt, one of our ex APAC ex school member who has started three coaching studies in China since 2010, we are building on his past efforts to continue the, the fourth coaching survey in China. And as uh, Julius earlier alluded, this time we also include Hong Kong and India. So the purpose of this, sur the, uh, this survey is to establish a baseline of the coaching industry in, our ma in these Asian markets and track its development over time to identify mm -hmm. trends and new insights to support the advancement of this relatively new profession. Mm -hmm. The survey collects information on coaching <coughs> practice, process, outcome, and demographics from both the buyers, which is primarily corporate users, and providers um, who are internal and external coaches of coaching services with the aim of getting the full story from both sides. We are very proud to have a strong team of APAC coaches working on this project, and uh, which is led by Yeni um, as, uh, as a JIT. And we're also partnering with an academic institution, Tongji University in Shanghai, um, to support the project. So uh, this, this survey will be rolled out in mid-November, and we count on all of you for your support in helping us to complete the survey to give us a strong um, sample, um, both coaches as well as corporate, um, corporate users. Results are expected, as Julius uh, said, we will uh, try our very best to get it done um, next uh, May so that we can present it at the APAC coaching conference. We also hope to include more Asian markets in future surveys. In closing, I would like to welcome Eliza Quack to be our new research chair, and you will hear more of, uh, from her regarding how you, the, uh, our APAT members, uh, how you can be engaged in research topics that are of interest to you. So thank you for um, your attention. Thank you so much, Cynthia. You're welcome. So now, let's move on to the program committee. So Michael. Thank you very much. Um, I've actually been focusing on trying to figure out where that background noise is coming from, um, but I'll do, do my best here. For, the, for programs, um, as you can see by the report, some of our accomplishments are we moved over to Zoom, which seems to do pretty well for the most part. Um, I think we've enhanced the quality of our speakers. Participation has, has increased from an average of 8 to 12 to around 20 to 37, if you look at the last three webinars. And we're doing a better job promoting the events more consistently via email, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We're now offering CCEU credits to members who participate. Um, and I give a lot of thanks to Shirley for helping to make that effort happen. Um, and we've recent, recently, just over the last two weeks, invited, and we've got confirmation from three or four conference speakers to be monthly talk speakers as a way to lead up to the conference and to attract more attention for the conference. Um, the other thing we've done is we've created the, um, the new uh, offering that Julius mentioned already, the coach consulting program. Uh, the first one is a three month program. It'll be ending, I believe in early December. And the plan is to offer them a survey for the participants, there are 18 participants, and to get their feedback and then uh, re revise it and then offer it again early next year. Uh, what else? That's 
most of what we've done. Um, I want to give a lot of thanks to, uh, for, to Julius for uh, to really encouraging us to create teams. Because of that, um, it, there is now a team with Yenne, Shirley, uh, and myself. And um, that's, been, that's where we've been able to sort of do, do more than we could before. It was really too much for one person. Um, it does feel a lot more like a team now. Um, so we're able to do much better. So that's all I can think of at this point. Any questions? No. Great. Thank you very much. Nice one. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Now let's move on to peer group coaching. And Shirley, please take it away. Shirley, I think you're on mute. Let me check. Oh boy. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. I'm on. I'm on. And that's the problem. Um, okay, the, we've had an increase in the number of people attending the PGC this year. Um, all over, all up attendance has been 89 people or 89 attendances, which is, is great compared to last year. Um, range in terms of seven to 13 people for each session. And we keep it at a maximum of 15. We probably could extend it, but have 15 people say, participate and the others just listen in and you know, enjoy the experience but without necessarily have much communication. Um, we've had some people who act as facilitators have um, resigned from the positions because of the work that they had and we've had new members who've taken up the roles of facilitators and, and it's been very fluid and I think it's been very productive. People would um, I think agree that we've had some very, very good cases presented and really um, very effective facilitation, which has ended up assisting case owner and everyone else to gain some deeper understanding of, of um, coaching. And the um, we're now trying to identify the um, facilitators and the coachee, uh, case owner, sorry, in advance. And... Uh, we also are going to send out a roster and that will be discussed how that occurs within the next um, month. And I'd like to thank everybody on the committee and particularly TV who's really stepped in and helped me and, and propped me up when um, I have not been able to attend and I can always rely on him and, and everyone else on the team to sort of come up with things and support me during the sessions. So I've been exceptionally lucky in having such a great group of people to work with. And even though we haven't had a lot of meetings, we, we've managed to communicate between sessions. And um, it's, I think it's been productive and I'm looking forward to it getting better and maybe not too much bigger, but better. So that's it. Thank you. Right. Oh, no, sorry, I just need one thing. I see we've got the ICF um, CCUs for all of the PGC up until next year, and we are applying for them for the talks retrospectively. So I make application in conjunction with Michael um, after each talk or in, in blocks and uh, send out the CCEs. So that's that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. So now let's go to the Public Relations Committee. So Dali. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm happy to. Hello. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, lovely to hear all of you. It's a pleasure to present this uh, report. So the uh, PR committee has been quite active. I think. I think one of one of our. Uh, most treasured uh, activities is the, is the newsletter, APAC Voice. Uh, we have reinvented it with a new name, new sections, new design. Uh, we've been able to publish the newsletter quarterly uh, on time. And that's thanks to everybody who sends articles and who, um, you know, uh, supports us in the journey. Uh, we've also, create, we've also uh, started advertising in the newsletter. And... Um, um, publish guidelines so that there's, there's a proper process in terms of advertising. And I'm really happy to say that uh, uh, there has been advertising in every, uh, every 
um, quarter and this quarter in October when the newsletter is out uh, we've got a very good order so uh, yes it's going very well um, we've also uh, uh, taken a survey and asked people how they felt about the uh, newsletter and I'm happy to say the feedback has been very positive uh, of course I have to say that it wouldn't have been as uh, um, as successful if it wasn't for the fact that uh, you know, I have APAC members who write to me and uh, on their own uh, say that they'd like to publish uh, in the newsletter, they'd like to write an article. So all I want to say to everybody is, please keep those articles coming. We showcase APAC, APAC members in the newsletter. So please uh, do participate in the interviews. We'd like to know you all better. And I'm sure APAC would like to know all of us better. So thank you very much for that. We're also, um, we're also uh, pretty uh, made uh, APAC pretty active on uh, social media and uh, today I'm happy to say that our presence on FP page which when we started was about 56 fans or so has now increased to about 2,500 likes. Uh, we Ooh. make sure that we try and yes, <laughs> we make sure that we try and um, uh, you know write an article, uh, make some kind of contribution weekly both on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and um, Yes, our members are increasing. We have about 781 members on LinkedIn, and I'm, I'm sure they will simply grow. Um, it's been a tremendous journey, and it wouldn't have been without the support of my team, my deputy chair, Narayanan Shankar, Fraser Murray, Rajiv Matthews, Kopue Eng. They've been so supportive. They've come back with ideas. They've been there to help me every part of the journey, and I want to thank all of you. Going forward, uh, we're looking at a marketing kit, which we want to... Uh, finalize and send out so that Expo and other members can use it when they want to talk about APAC to either corporates or individuals. It's in the making and hopefully by the end of October we should have it out. Um, and we're also hoping that uh, we'll be able to link our social media on the website, uh, APAC website, uh, if and when, when we do a makeover for the website. So that those are some plans that we have in our mind. Let's see how it goes. Um, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Dali. And thank you. So now let's move on to e-technology and we have the convener, quite fun. AF. Hello. 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 Hi, AF. Hi, Dave, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, the e-technology e committee was a ad hoc committee formed uh, to formulate strategy for leveraging on technology to help to support APEC's uh, pursuit of its uh, mission and objectives. Um, the objective of this committee is also to advocate use of specific tools to, to the to the EXCO, uh, support the website and the membership man management system, uh, supporting chairs in, in, in handling technical problems that they face uh, as they, as they uh, go along uh, with their work. Um, this ad hoc committee was not elected in the AGM as you probably have uh, realized. It was uh, formed as a result of the uh, retreats that we had so, and we have four, four members in the, in the committee right now. They are Shane, Catherine, and Dina, and Michael Shell. So what the, the committee has done in the past uh, few, few months was to uh, look into or initiate, uh, initiate the formation of the social medias, evaluate and advocate on use of um, uh, teleconference facilities. Yeah? And, or endorsing certain uh, proposal from uh, APEC members or EXCO members uh, to use certain specific tools. Uh, I would like to say that some of the technological platform, at least 50% of the technological platforms APEC uses now, are not accessible by people in China. Well, this is a very uh, tricky situation because China blocked a lot of sites, especially the free uh, free of charge sites like, for example, Facebook is totally blocked in, in China. So the Facebook page and the Facebook group 
are not accessible by our members residing in APEC. So we are looking into solutions in, into this so that we can include our members from China. I think it, it is not a coincidence that very few of the APEC members are from China. I think this is due to the, the way they block a lot of sites. So it's not convenient for people from China to, to reach out to the outside world. And when we, we, we uh, strive to, to bridge the gap here. So, um, so at the moment, uh, we have, uh, we have a Google Doc to, to store our videos that we recorded from Monthly Talk. And then these sites are not accessible uh, from China. So we will have to look into alternative sites like Yuku. However, there are challenges in, in implementing Yuku because they need you to have a China Chinese uh, ID or a Chinese telephone number or mobile number in order for you to even register for an account. So these are the some of the problems I'm sharing with members. Maybe members can give suggestions or feedback to, to the EXCO later on. Uh, one final in initiative that we have is, is the uh, makeover of the website, which we, we plan to have a new website, new look and feel, make it more mobile uh, responsive. Uh, by next year, early next year. Um, yeah, I think that, that's it. I have, uh, that's all I have to report today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kea. So now let's go to the membership committee. So, Catherine. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, say a really big fan. Thank you to all of you joining and renewing your membership year with us. So you have contributed um, to three times increase uh, from last year APEC current mem membership. Last year we had some uh, technical difficulties also we were at 52 members and this year um, end of July which is our fiscal year and we have uh, 166 and today we have 190 members um, so big thank you to all of you um, who join us and also renew with us um, also very um, special thanks to the contributions of exco and uh, the current and past uh, membership subcommittee also uh, for the hard work <laughs> And uh, without your help, um, I don't think I can report anything like this today. Um, from membership committee, our aim actually is to give you very good uh, membership experience through uh, good membership processes and also um, to support membership uh, attraction and engagement. That's our aim and our goal. So the key challenges that we face at the very beginning when we pick up the, uh, the committee um, and it was the top priority is to really tackle various difficulties we had in the past and to reconnect again membership database and to enable renewal process. Um, so um, I'm very happy to report to all of, all of you that um, after a few months of work, um, we have smoothened the uh, membership processes um, to ensure that you have a pleasant experience with us. Um, in terms of also other uh, important work, uh, support membership uh, attraction and engagement. Um, for membership drive, um, Julie has also mentioned and, and earlier about the APEC uh, ambassador. Thank you for your leadership, Julius, on intensifying the membership drive activities through invites and also launching this uh, initiative. And our, our plan is really to, to have the local uh, ambassadors to promote APEC and so that we can have more uh, members as well. And uh, we also plan to partner with coaching schools locally to reach out for more. So this is for membership drive um, activities that we have in mind. And as for engagement, um, we have started a Facebook 
Facebook group for members only, which is different from um, Dolly mentioned before, um, the Facebook page and LinkedIn, which are open to public. And the aim for this members, members only uh, gr group in Facebook is really to, to create a safe virtual platform for members to get support and to network with each other. So we, we actually know that um, it's quite hard to connect with someone that we don't know. Um, so thanks to Yuta. Yuta, um, I think she has some problem today. And Yuta is the uh, deputy chair of membership and she put together an activity within a Facebook group. This is for member only call um, interview. So we want to introduce members as a person and to get to know each other beyond our profiles on Facebook so that we can, we hope to create an APEC family community um, that we can have safe and, and safe environment for Mingo and Network. And today we only have half members, so around 100 uh, members join Facebook group. And uh, if you haven't joined, please, you know, join us and interact as well and get support and, and network there. Um, I would also like to especially uh, thank um, Rita Vought from Thailand and uh, Vicky Lee from Hong Kong who contributed also uh, earlier being the uh, sub community members um, due to personal reasons and they cannot uh, continue with us and thanks you stepping up as well. We are still looking for subcommittee members. If you are interested to join us and uh, or other APEC subcommittee as well, you know, please reach out to me and I will connect you too. So once again, thank you so much and looking forward having your continuous support. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So now let's move on to the APAC coaching conference update. Jimmy? Yes, okay. My signal is not stable when my wife is disappeared. Just signal me, okay? Um, I'm really happy to see a lot of faces today that I have never seen before. Hi, everyone. Um, in summary, we confirmed the date of the conference for three days. From 26 to 27 of May, uh, under the theme of harmony and mindfulness of uh, for humanity, which is happening in Bangkok, Thailand, which 26 is the full day of free conference by uh, Dr. Michelle Goldsmith, deliver the session together with the most well um, established or well known and highly respected monk, Dr. Um, Chan Wawachlak Meki, who is famous in practicing mindfulness internationally in Thailand and everywhere else, and the governor of the Bank of Thailand, who will share about the, how coaching helps in the Wuhan world. This is the, on the day one. And you will experience how coaching works and impact society through coaching for Thailand showcase, which will exhibit throughout the three days of the conference. Um, the main conference on the 26th and 27th of May next year, Dr. Michael Cosmith again will be the king of speaker on the 26th. And on the 27th, we have the professor from the US, he's very, um, he's um, American Japanese, Professor, who is uh, very well known in heartfulness concept, is the he will be the keynote speaker on day two, and then in each day, there will be the speaker sharing knowledge, skill, experience, and uh, the insights in four tracks, which are suitable from coaches, human resources, and business leaders at the level of individual in organization and society. And in this conference, there will be 35 speakers from five continents, which is different from uh, the previous conference. 
all together, there will be um, uh, this conference will be uh, all three days. We'll deliver something that uh, I believe that all projects cannot meet. What we would like all of the APAC members to do now is to help sharing the information about this conference to all of your HR and business leader friends and your network as much as you can so that uh, the coaching can be something that adds value to the society as we aim from the, uh, the vision of the APAC which we would like to be the coaching voice in Asia Pacific. The most important thing is you must keep your eye on the happy early bird price, which it will be $250 lower than the full price. So um, our chair of the program and speaker committee here, Chong Fong Sua, who is here. So if you have any questions, we would like to answer your your questions in detail, probably now or later on. Yeah, this is all about the report. And the promotion will be on the website probably in the next two weeks, together with the hotel booking and the details of the program in each stream. Yeah, that's all the report that we have at the moment. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Um, Julius got disconnected, so I'll just I'll follow up. So the next next item is the uh, we need the members to confirm the appointments for the new honorary auditors. So, Catherine, do you have their names so we can? Uh, we, we need to have a proposer, and then we need someone to second the honor, honorary auditors. And, Catherine, can you, are you on mute? I'll second it for Michael. Okay, and just, just for clarity, the names are Alma Horn and Michael Liu. I'll second that, Shirley. Second it, great. Thank you, Shirley. So that's been approved. Okay. Um, now looking for um, the next item. And I'm waiting for a text from Julius because <laughs> I'm not sure what's next. Um, although last year, the next item would be the uh, proposed amendments to the Constitution, but I'm not sure if we have any this time. So, um, here. yeah. Well, before we go there, are there any, any questions for any of the uh, committee? leaders who gave the reports, do any of the members have questions about what's uh, about the report so far? Yes, um, uh, this, is, uh, Warapad, this is Warapad from Bangkok. I have a question for Gerald, and uh, I would like to ask him uh, the types of uh, pro bono projects we're doing. Um, I don't know if we have uh, new ideas that have come up, because, you know, coaching can be seen as a as an instrument for social innovation. I don't know whether, Gerald, you've, or you've given thought to them. Thank you. <clears throat> um, yeah. At the moment, I think, um, uh, Dr. Warafat, the um, focus has been on trying to establish the uh, NGO contacts and, and uh, engaging in discussion. Um, in terms of, um, uh, in terms of, um, extending the concepts uh, I, I believe that's what you're 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 referring to correct me if i'm wrong yes that, that's correct. is it right yeah yeah no, no i don't think we have actually as a committee had the opportunity yet because we only had one committee meeting which was really a catch-up meeting um and we are still focusing very heavily on getting the projects off the ground um, and then i think we will be focusing more on enhancing the offerings Right now, my, my major concern is to have a working project and in every country. However, I would, I would really welcome uh, if we could take that offline and I could, could um, 
chat to you about your your thoughts on this okay fine fine gerald we will do that thank you dr warfort thank you yeah. any other questions for the committee leaders uh, this is Eliza here. I want to say I'm very impressed with all the reports and the hard work and in a, a great sense of community and contribution from everyone. Uh, I have a couple of questions about membership in general, and that is in terms of the target. Uh, do we have uh, in APAC, uh, among EXCO, all the members, uh, what uh, the idea of um, the numbers are that we are trying to drive towards? And the reason I'm asking is because there's a trade-off between quantity and a sense of community. The larger it is, the harder it is uh, you know, to try and engage people. And um, in some ways, you will always have uh, people who are kind of sleeping uh, and they, they, they don't. So, so it's a few core that still uh, moves around. And ICF in Singapore has about 400 over people. So if you are looking at the numbers at the moment, if we have 190, we're doing very well. So Catherine, congratulations on doing that. Uh, and connected to that uh, question about the numbers that we are trying to aim at, uh, also, uh, if it's possible for us to have an idea of uh, two things. One, are these members also members of ICF? And if so, that would uh, actually help us with the collaboration, particularly in the research area. And secondly, in terms of also the countries. So I have the membership list, but I don't know uh, who is where and you know, what's scattered. So how many people do we have in Singapore who are APAC members? And if that's the case, it will be easier for us to uh, activate them and uh, engage them. And I'm very happy to host uh, lunch parties in my home. If we have enough mm -hmm. of the APAC members of Singapore so that I can actually engage them face-to-face uh, -face, uh, while they're here to get some ideas about what they would like uh, to see coming out of research, uh, the areas that uh, they would like uh, to um, you know, uh, be better engaged and contribute, uh, for instance. So, Catherine, perhaps uh, if you can help me answer the questions, that'd be great. Great. Thank you, Eliza, for your questions. Um, I don't know whether I can answer all the questions, but... Uh, I certainly would like to join your <laughs> dinner or <laughs> your gathering in Singapore. Um, um, we, our member, current members, um, um, 190, um, this includes around 70% ICF members. So most of our members are either ICF members or um, certified ICF members. So that's our records and um, one of our unique, um, I guess, selling point, or we, we actually never really put it in writing, is the sense of small community that we have. We tend to be very friendly and it's like a family, as well as um, we include our, one of our um, values also diversity, uh, diversity. So we include you know, different members, uh, new coaches, uh, very experienced coaches as well. So, of course, this is very unique to APEC and we want to keep it like this also. So, um, so my own um, preference as well as the chair is to create a membership experience and uh, to make it real. Of course, you, we are also growing and Together in Asia Pacific region, we have, um, I think, 3,000 members, um, uh, 3,000 coaches, sorry. And uh, we hope that, we hope that uh, next year when we have uh, conferences as well, we grow um, towards that goal, not 3,000, but perhaps, you know, 10%. Um, if we can uh, put together resources as well, activity initiatives, and this all depends on how active all of us, um, not only EXCO, but also the members, whether the member find uh, value added as well. So we do want to grow slowly, uh, intimately. We have um, priority also to create uh, experience, membership experience. And uh, with, with um, Julius as the um, president, and he has really strong um, network and also his strength is really to connect to um, new um, 
network as well. So our growth, a lot of uh, contributions also, you can see he bring a lot of members to, to us. But um, at the end, you know, I would like to see members to bring in members, then it's become more sustainable as well as um, it shows that we are really adding value and, and the members are gaining their, their benefits, you know, from us. So I hope that, you know, through research and, and other activities that we have and new initiatives, and I'm sure that we are growing in the, going in the right direction. Thank you, great question. Um, and you got a text from Julius. He's, he's uh, apologizing that he lost the connection. I don't know if the title. I'm sure he would answer Hi. much more on top yes. as well. But that was very helpful. Um, Hi, Michael. I'm back. Julius. Hey, he's back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect oh, timing. Yeah. <laughs> Is it time? Okay. Getting Please close? continue. Please continue, Michael. Please well, we're, continue. We're, we're, just, we're at the end. You know, I was just going to mention that uh, for the Outstanding Membership Award for next year, that information will come yeah. later at an interesting time. Um, yes. But any, anything else you want to add before we close, Julius? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there are no more questions, so yeah, we, we can proceed to the closing already. And um, again, I would like to thank everybody. I suppose <clears throat> I can claim that, you know, the first year has been meaningful for everybody. Has been uh, the, the first year has been successful, I would say. And I really thank everybody for your support, for your contribution, and um, for your help in making all these activities happen. And I urge everybody to stay connected with us, to keep the journey with us. And I encourage everyone to register early you know, for the 2017 APAC Coaching Conference because there will be limited seats. And so with that, um, I'll hear your voices again. I'll see you in our next AGM next year. And I'm so excited for the upcoming activities that we'll be having. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Great thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you, Exco members. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All the best, everybody. Don't forget to join the talk at 8 p.m. Thank you. Is it on the same link? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Still one. 20 Bye. minutes. Can you stay for a while? Okay. Michael, is it on the same link? Yes, yeah, same link. Okay, same link. thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I can stay. Bye. 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 Still one. Can you stay for a while? Yeah, I can stay. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, nice. Thank you so much. Um, Bye. I can see some EXCO members also in the call. So, yeah, I, I would like to get some feedback about how it went. Um, there were some technical glitches. Sorry about that. Um, so, there. And, uh, Julius, um, since I have attended practically, members also. since I've attended practically every AGM, I congratulate you and Michael. You got instant quorum tonight. In the past, we had to count 20, 21, 22. Then we had to make calls to other people. So in the past one time, we had to delay 30 minutes. And then you, so you did very, very well. And I think the reports were very succinct, very concise. So that's, again, excellent. Awesome. Thank you for Thank that you feedback. So Hi, this is Eliza. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, I just want to say it's my first AGM and is very well run. I, I concur with Siluan, who's been very inspirational. Uh, great speeches, great succinct stuff, and uh, you guys are running it on a very nice, uh, you know, time basis. Uh, my concern, I think, is still that, uh, you know, although we have hundred people, uh, we still have very few, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the quorum, and yeah. uh, the issue then becomes, uh, you know, how whether you know, actually there's an analysis being done about whether we are actually getting the same people attending the same kind of you know, webinars and all the rest, and that there's a whole range of population that is still not engaged. So that's why, for me, uh, I think that a combination of virtual 
plus on the ground in the countries. If we, uh, for instance, knew who the members are in Singapore, then I think we can reach out to them and also persuade them uh, to do more of the ambassadorship, etc. So I will follow up with Catherine to try and get a list of the people who are based in Singapore. And, uh, you know, uh, oh, and probably in the, in the early part of next year, because I'm really fully tied up to then, I will start uh, trying to campaign for greater participation and getting them also involved in the research uh, area. I do have a question which is um, uh, basically if I wanted to talk about um, how to uh, take the kind of research forward uh, and I, I can do this with the committee, what is the forum uh, for getting the members? And I'm thinking maybe next year at the uh, conference, besides just presenting, we can also do a poll uh, of yeah. the membership to ask them, you know, uh, who's interested in uh, research, uh, what kind of research they're interested in. And that's the reason I asked for ICF, because there's a lot of stuff already on. And one of the things we don't want to do is duplicate things, but rather to build on it. So I'm not sure what, what the forum is. I'm still kind of feeling my way around. That's why yeah, I'm, I'm that, thinking, uh, that conversation probably should happen another time, because we're about to start the monthly call, and it's using okay. the same link. So I'm going right, to have to hang up here and then... Okay. And Julius, could you, Michael, could, can we continue yes. staying on this line? Because um, I no, don't want to lose the connection for the speaker up to 8, eight o'clock, right? Well, the thing is, yeah, if the speaker comes in, um, it's just kind of confusing for them. But yeah, there's, I mean, there's 12 people on this line right now. We, I don't we, mind staying okay. in case I lose the connection. That's fine. And so, Julius, you had a question for C. Luan? Do you I'm want staying. to ask? So yeah, we, we can go ahead and stay. I'll let her know that um, there'll be 12 people when she comes in. So okay. yeah, go ahead. Is Eliza off? And, and Julia said you, have, you had a question about feedback for okay. the call, is that right? No, no, I don't No, have you're a good. Question. Okay, yeah. so we'll just, leave it, we'll just leave it open then. Go ahead, yeah. you guys can talk about whatever you want. I'll, we'll just keep it open. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. You guys want to respond to Eliza's question? Hey, Eliza is not there, right? Is she there, still there? I think she's no, still she here. Or did she leave? She Eliza, are you still online? Because I would like to respond to your questions. Uh, she's on. She's no longer with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, I was going to end this and then start new, but um, I don't think we need to do that. So yeah. okay. you can talk about anything you want. I'll let her know. Okay. So, so we need to disconnect first. Well, I mean, that, that's what I was recommending. Just so we can start over. But the thing is, you don't want to lose the connection. Yeah, okay. so I, then, I will stay on. I, I got no problem staying on. Yeah. Um, some nice um, chanting in the background. Yeah. So I guess we'll just, we'll just keep it open. And then anyone can talk okay. about whatever okay. they want to. The Excellent. Yeah. Okay. 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 There's a nice, nice girl again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get some water. I'll be back.
Hi, Lenny. Lenny, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. We just had our annual general meeting. With the, uh, oh, really? Yes, yeah, so we had just over 40, 44 people, I believe. So, uh, so wow. we're still here from that call. So. Wow, wow. And when you could say general meeting, this is Apex general meeting? Yes. I, I have gotten confused between APAC and MindSpan. I see. Why well, am my, I confused? I'm not sure. My, <laughs> MindSpan is a, a for-profit organization, right? Yeah. And a, yes. APAC is a non-profit. It's a non-profit. APAC is a coaching. APAC is a, APAC is what, Michael? Yes. Yeah, so it stands for the Asian Pacific Alliance of Coaching. Yeah. And it's a it's a coaching you know association, much like I see. Yeah. Yeah, and and are most people in APAC um, certified coaches? That's a good question. I would say at least half, probably probably seventy five percent. I would guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good. It's a really diverse group. I mean, because you know, ICF is very powerful, obviously. However, the limitation is that they tend to focus on one area at a time. So yes. It'd be like ICF Japan, then it'd be ICF Tokyo, ICF Singapore. Yeah. So because of that right. reason, APAC was formed. So Got it. Interesting. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, um, because uh, um, you know I've been offering this course, which is quite reasonable, reasonable, uh, fairly short. It's called knowledge based coaching. And okay. Uh, this last year, I certified fifty people. Wow. Just through little. <laughs> Like this, and and jury is interested in my coming to to Tokyo, Great. Uh, possibly doing something, and um, I'll tell you, it's approximately five thousand okay. uh, dollars. I don't know what coach training programs are in in different countries, you know, in China or in in uh, Japan. If that's too much. We'll cut it down. Okay. If all I need is six people, and six to eight, but six is fine. And if someone offers their home, not for food or just for coffee and water or tea mm. and water. Okay. Can I offer a discount? They get it free. Free, even better. Okay. So how about this? I mean, it, you know, we don't like that people promote events, but we also we'd like to promote you. You know what I mean? Because we want the, our our vision is to expand coaching throughout the world, starting with yeah. Asia. No, so, I don't want I don't want to yeah, promote yeah. myself either. And I, yeah. I know I know you're not about that, but so maybe yeah. at the end, maybe you can mention at the end, and, or maybe give them a link to your website. We can put it in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. And, and mention, yeah. And, or or yeah. I'll send you the link, and you can. I mean, it's uh, um, okay. uh, I just decided to take some of the sort of robust stuff that that I had mm. done through the university. Okay. Make it more workable and uh, sounds exciting and affordable. Yeah. So I've mainly worked inside of companies, but now okay. I've just said, you know, well, get together and especially with this October deadline, a lot of people hadn't had coached for years, had hours, thousands of hours, but had never signed up. Uh, um, mm. And so I had this anyway. That was. What I was doing. And, well, then you also have the um, meaning of the change. Yeah. Are you still yeah. doing that? And are you still I working at, at fielding, teaching evidence-based coaching? Yes. Still I doing teach, that I teach okay. one of the courses. I, you know, I, okay. I, I, I designed the program, and then because I moved to London, I, I didn't want to – I couldn't teach it. I mean, they kind of missed – they missed an opportunity. They should have made me, you know – uh, fielding Indeed. Europe or fielding, but they oh, didn't. Yeah. Oh, and right. I'm just as happy to tell you the truth. It's fine to work for them some. Mm, um, okay. But well, I'm know. really interested. I'm excited about hearing about the book. You know, the history of coaching. I think there's a lot of gems in there that people don't know about. You know. And yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it was. Such, I got to tell you, Michael. It was. It was such a fun book to write. I can't mm. tell you. I was just. I was. Um. And also, if if um. And you can ask people this. I don't want to sell the book, but it's 
I have it for cheaper probably than you can get. But look at look at your Amazon and tell me how much it costs. Okay. Because I could probably get it cheaper. I have it. And then all I need is the is the cost to mail to Asia. And sometimes that's not that bad from London. Well, yeah, I would I'm interested in, in buying it, so Oh, oh you should yeah. Mm. Michael, Where? just give me your address. I'm going to send you one. <laughs> okay. The hidden history of coaching. Your, your, your family, sort of family, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're yeah. Next. It's 45 on uh, in paperback. $45? Yeah, on, on Amazon. Oh, screw it. Uh, you okay. can buy it used so, for 23 so, Kindle yeah, so, 8. Yeah. So, yeah, so at the end of the program, if you say, if people are interested in, in buying this book, contact me. Okay. And then Michael, I can, you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to, because it's crazy. I have stacks of these books. There's no way, I mean, what am I going to charge? I, what would I charge for it? I don't know, 10, I think I've charged 10 bucks. Oh, that'd be great. That's a bargain. Yeah. 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 And so then all it is, I, we have to add on the, the, the postage, but even then it's not bad because it's a book rate. So okay. anyway, um, the, uh, and your, it, were you were, were you back in in New Mexico? Yes, Arizona. I went back to Arizona, Arizona for Buck's funeral and yeah, yeah, Tennessee. yeah. It was it was beautiful. It was a beautiful service. Really? You know, he wrote he yeah. wrote his own obituary. It's right here. I'll show it to you. Really? Is it? Yeah. Oh my God! There he is. Oh my God! Wow! Well, yeah, 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 yeah. In the middle of the night, like I guess it was the day before or two days before he died, he woke up. And said, "I need to write my. I need to plan the service." He planned the whole service. It's like you know, ten pages long. He wrote his obituary. It was all all women um, ministers, and and he had Buddhists. It was partially Buddhist, and his daughter, you know, she lives in. She became Jewish, so she there was a Jewish part to the ceremony. It was amazing. It was really beautiful. That is amazing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Such an amazing connection because because his latest wife, who I have my own problems with. Um, yeah, we, all, and, we all do. <laughs> I guess we all do. <clears throat> she's been um she's been writing to me because a another former husband, Tom Hayden, is quite sick. Oh he is, okay. So there's this whole well, Tom Hayden was, he was the governor, right? Or senator of California. Well, he was a senator. And then, but before that, for all of us, including Casey, out of the civil rights and anti-war movement, he was the... He was a, he was a guy. He, he was a big guy. Yeah. And actually, the, my first husband who died was also a big guy. They were roommates at college. And wow. They were, they were um, but he died in the 80s of cancer. And so... And then, and then, well, then Tom Hayden married Jane Fonda. Yeah. Who been, who married? And, and they and Such they matter. they had a son, and their son and my son are best friends. Oh my God. New York. And I'm serious. <laughs> they lived together in New York. When when my son got married, uh, Troy flew to to London. Here, I mean, it's all you know. It's oh. all. It's all crazy. anyway. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, look at all these people. Yeah, they're all coming in. Amazing, amazing. Shirley from Sydney. Wow. Eliza. So, so, and what's the time difference, you guys? It depends which country you're talking about, but Jury's here. There's, there's old Jury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, where, um, where, where, where are you now? Where are you based? London. Oh, you're in London. So, I think it's seven hours, seven hours difference, I think. Seven hours difference to Japan. To Japan, but Australia, and then Australia, is Australia six, eight. I think no six because they're they're six. later. No, no, I'm sorry, eight would be eight, right, Shirley? Eight. Yeah. Eight and what about there. Hong Kong or or Shanghai or that would China? Be six. That'd be six hours. Six. Different. Yeah. I'm really not good at this stuff. I'm probably the wrong person to tell um, you. But. Hong Kong is probably seven hours. We're only one hour different with with Hong Kong. Right. 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 Yeah. So yes, Hong Kong, uh, yes, yes. And, and yes. then we have someone here from India. So then it is even more complicated because they have a half hour different, oh. you know, so it's like six and a half. Or You're kidding. 
Yeah. Well, and also Bev Paulin, who I who I uh, must right. have talked a hundred years ago. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she, she, I think she got her master's from. I taught her in her master's uh, program. Okay. And yeah, she's, she's in where New Zealand? Where is so she? She's in uh, Singapore. Singapore. Oh, now she she's right. moved. Oh God, you guys. She, she took the job I had when I at a job at Coach in the Box, managing director for Asia. And they really wanted someone in Singapore. It really didn't work to be in Tokyo. They've got no clients here. And it, yeah, I couldn't convince my wife to move. So yeah, that didn't work out. But she now she has that, that same job. So it's an interesting connection. <laughs> well, Bev, I mean, I really have known Bev for, I, I mean, since uh, it might be, she's a PhD. We might have gotten candidate, PhD. Candidate. Yeah. She's a candidate for a PhD, I believe. Then, then I taught her. Than I, okay. her. I can never figure out how I kind of know people. I know, I know Jury because she graduated <laughs> not so long ago. Right? Yes. So she had uh, uh, poor Jury had had a had an absolutely um, I will say this just 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 you know, joyfully or, or or lightly. She had a suitor who would not, who was completely crazy. Uh, he could not. This was in the program. He could not think of anything but her. Oh my he god! Nuts. Yes. <laughs> Poor Jerry. She's married. She's got her own life. Just oh god, mm -hmm. this guy went nuts. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, I, I knew how to. Um... Yes. Well, let's see. I mean, you were absolutely right. You were absolutely right. Good, good going. Okay. <laughs> uh, look, uh, sure. It looks like we never stopped the recording from the AGM meeting, so it's been recording straight through. <laughs> oh boy, maybe I should. I may stop it and.